Imagine waking up to find that everything the world believed about the semiconductor industry had quietly overturned. For decades, the consensus was absolute. Without American, Dutch, or Japanese machinery, no nation could hope to stand at the forefront of chip making. China, in particular, was expected to lag behind indefinitely. The West held all the irreplaceable tools, EUV machines, ultra-fine etchers, exotic chemicals, gases purified beyond imagination. Block access to these, and any rival's progress would freeze. That was the theory. That was the comfort. But that confidence is now unraveling. Small whispers had been circulating for months, rumors that SMIC, China's leading foundry, was pushing further than expected. Most dismissed it as the usual noise. Perhaps a minor node refinement or a clever trick, but nothing that would shake the world. Then a wave of reports broke through, claiming SMIC had achieved an advanced nanometer class process without using a single machine from the United States or the Netherlands. No ASML EUV systems. No applied materials gear. No LAM research equipment. Not a trace of Western hardware a feat that industry logic insisted was impossible. Yet something unusual was clearly unfolding inside SMIC's heavily restricted facilities in Shanghai. Satellite photos revealed clean rooms, stripped out and reconstructed from scratch. New, unfamiliar machines appeared, devices that didn't resemble anything in Western fabs. Slowly, the fragments formed a pattern. SMIC wasn't reverse engineering. They were pioneering. Rather than chasing ASML's EUV path, they had chosen an entirely different route. Extreme multi-patterning enhanced by aggressive AI-driven computation. Machine learning was compensating for physical limits. Software was doing what hardware couldn't. Algorithms were carving matter at the atomic scale. This wasn't copying innovation. This was innovation. Their reinvention extended far beyond lithography. By joining forces with Chinese universities and research institutes, SMIC developed their own materials, photoresists, etchants, deposition compounds, gases, all domestically sourced, items previously dominated by suppliers in the US, Japan and Europe. Yet now they flowed into Chinese fabs from Chinese labs. How did this transformation happen so quickly? A different truth emerged. Talent migration. Quiet recruitment networks across Asia and beyond pulled in experts from Samsung, TSMC, and major American firms. It wasn't a slow leak. It was a movement. Whole groups of specialists arrived with years of knowledge. Some call it a brain drain. Others call it an orchestrated shift. But one thing was clear. SMIC wasn't simply manufacturing chips. It was assembling the expertise needed to rewrite the industry. Then came the mysterious internal effort known as Project Phoenix. Officially unacknowledged but widely discussed, it was said to run parallel to SMIC's standard operations. Rumors linked it to quantum optimization, defense-related research, and chip designs built to endure radiation. Some sources even hinted at collaboration with aerospace sectors, technology designed not just for space, but potentially for future conflict zones. More revelations surfaced, suggesting that China had quietly constructed a self-sufficient semiconductor supply network. Everything, from rare earth extraction to crystal growth, from chemical synthesis to ultra-pure gas production, had been replicated on Chinese soil. In an industry where one missing component can shut down an entire fab, China had built an end-to-end -end ecosystem with relentless precision. Buried patents later revealed another disruptive concept, adaptive node technology. Instead of fixed processes like 5NM or 3NME, this approach allowed a manufacturing line to reconfigure itself to the chip's requirements. High-performance CPUs, low-power sensors, AI accelerators, all produced on the same equipment without expensive retooling. This wasn't a refinement. It was a reinvention of fabrication itself. Chip design and manufacturing were no longer separate worlds. SMIC embraced an extreme version of design technology co-optimization, where AI design tools communicated directly with manufacturing data. Every chip was crafted with awareness of how it would be built. Each fabrication cycle informed the next. Smarter chips created better processes. Better processes enabled smarter chips. A feedback loop that fed on itself. 
Unofficial benchmark leaks hinted that SMIC's 2 nanometer class output might not only match TSMC's equivalents, but potentially beat them. Lower power draw, comparable performance, and unexpectedly high yields. If accurate, this wasn't simply a step forward. It was a tectonic shift. Now an uncomfortable question emerges. What if the West was never as secure as it believed? What if decades of dominance built on exclusive tools were far more fragile than assumed? SMIC didn't merely climb a wall. They may have shaken the foundation of the global chip hierarchy. This story has grown far beyond semiconductors. It is about autonomy. About a nation once locked out of the technological elite deciding to construct its own universe and declining to invite others in. It is about what happens when the established rules stop mattering. When assumptions collapse. When a competitor once kept at arm's length begins operating on an entirely new strategic wavelength. Because if SMIC can reach this level without ASML, without LAM research, without Tokyo Electron, then the real question is, what happens when they surpass those who tried to contain them? What happens when they scale faster, cheaper, and more aggressively than anyone predicted? For decades, the U.S. shaped global innovation by controlling access to advanced chip-making tools. That power determined who built the future. But now, that leverage is fading. SMIC hasn't simply delivered a chip. They've issued a declaration. We no longer rely on you. And if that declaration is real, then the semiconductor struggle has entered an entirely new era. The stable gap has collapsed. China hasn't just caught up. It may have jumped onto an entirely different developmental track. This isn't the story of a nation closing the distance. It's the emergence of a new technological order altogether. A quiet revolution is unfolding in the semiconductor world. One that isn't about catching up. It's about starting over. Companies once considered untouchable. Applied materials, LAM research, ASML, are suddenly confronting the reality that their influence may no longer be guaranteed. Inside these organizations, teams are racing to understand the advancements coming out of China, studying not just what has been achieved, but the speed, scale, and potential to reshape the industry entirely. The ripple effect is felt far beyond factories. Chip designers, electronics brands, cloud operators, and systems integrators are being forced to rethink long-held beliefs about cost, capability, and availability. If Chinese fabs can produce comparable or better performance with much lower investment, the economic assumptions that the industry has relied on for decades are suddenly in question. Decisions that once seemed safe now carry uncertainty, and executives are asking deeper questions. What breakthroughs remain hidden, and how will they redefine the playing field? Technically, the leap is extraordinary. SMIC's 2 nanometer process is not an incremental improvement. It's a fundamental rethinking of how chips are made. By blending traditional photolithography with electron beam exposure and atomic level deposition, they are pushing fabrication into a territory most of the world has only explored theoretically. This approach relies on advanced materials and chemicals that organize themselves on a molecular scale, allowing features smaller than light's wavelength. Essentially, this is precision at the atomic level, where control and accuracy exceed anything previously achievable in mass production. SMIC's breakthrough doesn't stop at materials. Their fabs reportedly run on custom AI-driven supercomputers that continuously optimize millions of variables in real time, adjusting exposure, layout, and deposition to ensure consistent, defect-free output. On top of that, they have addressed the long-standing quantum challenge. As transistors shrink, tunneling effects threaten stability and efficiency, but SMIC's quantum confinement engineering harnesses these effects instead of fighting them producing faster, smaller, and more efficient chips than ever before. Timing makes the story even more remarkable. Industry insiders suggest SMIC could begin volume production of these 2 nanometer chips by the end of 2025, possibly before TSMC. Plans for a 1.4 nanometer adaptive process are reportedly already underway, targeting 2026. This isn't a race to catch up. It's a complete reset of technological timelines. The consequences are vast. Companies that once had no choice now have alternatives. Cloud providers can rethink cost-to-performance trade-offs. Automotive manufacturers working on autonomous systems may gain access to high-performance silicon faster and cheaper. Defense and aerospace organizations that rely on highly secure chips could find new supply paths that bypass fragile global logistics. 
Early reports suggest SMIC's methods could also cut energy usage by up to 40%, a dramatic advantage as sustainability becomes an industry imperative. We are witnessing a paradigm shift. The notion that technological dominance belongs to a few entrenched players is collapsing. The rules of the game have changed, and every sector, from consumer electronics to defense, is already feeling the pressure. Yet this isn't an endpoint, it's a beginning. SMIC's advances signal a new chapter in innovation, one where adaptability, speed, and vision will determine survival. Established players must rethink their strategies and capabilities or risk falling behind in a landscape where yesterday's rules no longer apply. For anyone engaged with technology, investors, designers, or consumers, the message is clear. The ground is shifting beneath our feet. The devices, systems, and infrastructure we rely on are evolving faster than most realize. The question isn't whether change is coming, it's how ready we are for it. This isn't hype. This isn't speculation. The semiconductor world is already transforming. In a time when rapid change is the only constant, awareness, flexibility, and readiness are everything. The future isn't approaching, it's already here.